All right, so we are open to page 261 and 262 in our math workbook to correct our homework. So we are starting with number two. So number two, we were taking 533 and dividing it by 41. So for number two, if you didn't get 13, which is the answer, then you should be thinking, okay, our first step was asking, okay, can 41 go into five? And our answer would have been no. Can 41 go into 53? And then we would have answered, yes, it can go in one time. So that one would have gone above that first three, and we would have subtracted 41, gotten the ad that answer, and brought down the three. So number two should have been 13. Are there questions on number two, fifth grade? And I, I do encourage you, if you got it wrong, be looking at your work. I know some of you, you can do this in your head, but I want you to start getting into the habit of showing all of your work because there is going to come a time where you get the answer wrong. But if you don't put your work, then you and I can't see what you did and I can't really help you. Okay, then we had number five. So number five, 700 divided by 50. You should have gotten 14. Yeah, because 50 doesn't go into seven, but 50 goes into 70 once. You'd subtract 50. That would get you 20, and you bring down that extra zero, and you'd have 200, and 50 evenly goes into 200 four times, so then you would have put the four up here, and so you'd have 14 as your answer. Are there questions on number five? No. Okay. Then we have number 11. So number 11, 810 divided by 30, you should have gotten 27. Are there questions on number 11? Questions on number 11. Okay, show me on your hands one through five. How did you feel about these first three homework problems? Show me on your hand one through five. How did you feel about these first three homework problems? Drew, I can't see your hand, dude. Okay, okay. All right, go ahead, put your hands down. Let's go to the next page, number 14. Number 14. Yep, number 14. So this one is the skill we learned last year. So some of you may have forgotten how to do this. Number 14 said, use the table. What is the total amount of electricity a computer, a television, and a heater use in one hour? So what did we use to find this problem? Did we subtract? No. Did we multiply? Did we add? Yeah. yeah, we added. And so we were adding everything except the light bulb. So we were adding nine hundredths plus one and five tenths plus three tenths. And what's really important to make sure you line up when you are stacking these numbers to add. Who can raise their hand and tell me? What's important to line up, Layla? Your decimal. So if you were writing it, here, if you were writing it like, 0 0.09 and then you had like the one and the five like shifted over to where the decimal was like over here it wouldn't have lined up with the decimal in nine tenths so you want to make sure when you're stacking them to add you're lining up the decimal so you may have added and may have had the right numbers but if you didn't line up those decimals you probably got a different answer eosius and elena that's not how we sit in our chairs so if we add those three numbers, we should have gotten one and 89 hundredths kilowatts. And you can abbreviate kilowatts as KW. That would have worked. Make sure you have the correct unit. If you didn't, mark it and write it, please, because you need that correct unit. Are there questions on number 14? Okay. And then we had number 16. So number 16. The cost of each plane ticket for the Balthazar family summer vacation is $329. If there are seven family members, what is the total cost of the plane tickets? What were we doing for this problem to find the answer? Who can raise their hand and tell me? What were you doing? Elena? Multiplying. Yes, because one plane ticket is $329. There are seven family members. 329 times 7 would get you 2,303. 
So the total cost of all the plane tickets was $2,303. And make sure you have that dollar sign. Is there a question on number 16? No? All right, show me on your hands. How did you feel about these last two problems on your homework? How did you feel? I want you to be honest with me. Show me one through five. How did you feel? Okay. No, it's working. It's working. Thank you, though. Awesome. Go ahead and put your hands down. Take a little stretch break in your desk. A little stretch break in your desk. And then I want you to open up to the next clean page in your math notebook. All right, so opening up to the next clean page in your math notebook. You are going to be titling this page 5.5, divide by multiples of 10, and then today's date, which is 9-23-2020. So that's a 3 over here. That's a 3. So 5.5, divide by multiples of 10, and today's date, 9-23-2020. Put a thumbs up on your desk when you have that down. And Jack P., if you want to come over to the standing desk, you can. Bless you. We're going to get right into practice today. Yeah. Right into practice. So go ahead, label practice, your practice section. All right, so practice. We're going to have one word problem, and the rest are going to be just numbers. So we're going to get the word problem out of the way first, okay? So this is our word problem. I'm going to scoot it up a little bit, let it focus. Okay, so word problem. A soccer team has $168. So a soccer team has $168 to buy uniforms, to buy uniforms that cost $20 each. So a soccer team has $168 to buy uniforms that cost $20 each. 
how many uniforms can the team buy? Will there be any money left over? Yeah. Voices need to be off. So first, a soccer team has $168 to buy uniforms that cost $20 each. How many uniforms can the team buy? Will there be any money left over? Thumbs up on your desk and you got this down and you're ready to move on. A soccer team has $168 to buy uniforms that cost $20 each. How many uniforms can the team buy? Will there be any money left over? Most people are finishing up here in the second or third sentence. So it's taking a little moment or two. Is that what you do? Not yet. But you can sit and think about what you need to do to buy the problem. So yeah, you're patiently waiting. Thank you, first of all. And second of all, you can sit and think about what you need to do to solve this problem. All right, ready to rock. All right. Our problem is a soccer team has $168 to buy uniforms that cost $20 each. How many uniforms can the team buy? Will there be any money left over? I want you to whisper to the person next to you, what do you think you need to do to solve this problem? If you can hear me clap once. If you can hear me clap twice. If you can hear me clap three times. All right, so I heard the word division a lot. How many of you think we need to divide for this problem? How many of you think we need to divide for this problem? All right, you are correct. Go ahead, put your hands down. How many of you said we need to divide 20 by 168? How many of you said we need to divide 168 by 20? Yeah, okay. I would like you to quietly go ahead and get started on this problem. Jack P, you should be getting started on the problem. So I want you to try this on your own first. Yeah, you need to show your work. I want to see your work. Even if you do it in your head, you need to show your work. Because if you can do it in your head, that means you can do it on a piece of paper and show your work as well. Thank 
Thank you for saying all of us. problem correctly. So, you should have done it. I'm going to use a black marker because it's going to show up better with my dull smart board projector. Usually I would not say you should use a pen, but I'm going to so that you guys can see it better. So, 168 divided by 20. Rude. Okay. So, 168 Divided by 20. How many of you set up your division problem this way? Yep. How many of you set up your division problem this way? Awesome. Drew, please sit up. I know you might be tired, but laying your head down is not going to help. Okay. Then we ask ourselves, can 20 go into 1? Can it? Yes. Yeah. Can 20 go into 16? Yes. Yeah. Can 20 go into 168? Yes. Show me on your hands. How many times? How many times does 20 go into 168? You should be holding up eight fingers. Yes, eight. And 20 times eight is what? Who can tell me? What is 20 times eight? What is it, Mackenzie? 160. 160. So we would subtract 160. And we wind up with eight. Now, do I have any zeros to bring down? No. No. So, our question was, how many uniforms can the team buy? Will there be any money left over? Which of these numbers tells me how many uniforms they can buy? Which one? Which one? Jack L. The eight on the top. This is how many uniforms they can buy. So, eight uniforms. And then, what does this eight? What does this eight down here tell me? What does this eight tell me, Elena? Yeah, they can buy eight uniforms and they have eight dollars left over. What do we call this leftover amount at the bottom usually in division? It starts with an R. Raise your hand. What do we usually call that, Allison? Remainder. 
a remainder. So we had eight as a remainder for this word problem, it's $8. All right, Jack and Michael, you are going to head over to Mr. Leach's room for your map test. You can bring your water bottle if you want to. Take a little stretch when you get in there. Go over there first and then ask Mr. Leach to use the bathroom, okay? Yeah, you can bring it. Okay, everyone else. Yeah. Probably, we'll see. It depends on when you guys get back, okay? All right, see you in a little bit. Okay, then we have four practice problems. Just four, and then we'll be able to work on the work. So, let's get them written down. Number one is 300 divided by 20. Number two is 453 divided by 40. Number three is 720 divided by 60. Number four down here is 492 divided by 80. And notice I left room above for answers that go on top. And I left a lot of room below as well. So number one is 300 divided by 20. Number two is 453 divided by 40. Number three is 720 divided by 60. And number four is 492 divided by 80. Does anyone need more time to write these down? Okay. What do you guys notice about every single one of these division problems? What's something you notice? What do you notice, Frankie? Each one has zero at least one zero. Yeah, each of them have at least one zero. What does the title at the top of our notebook page say? Who can remind me? What does that say? What does that say, Senna? Yes. So you'll notice for each of these larger numbers, we're dividing them by a multiple of 10, meaning they're all numbers where we can take 10 and times it by something or multiply it by something, and that's what we're dividing by. So that is what we are practicing with today. I want you to go ahead and get started on these four practice problems. I will know you are finished if I see you quietly reading, writing, or working on something else at your desk. Kadish, go ahead. There might be a remainder. There might be a remainder. He just went out to get his notebook. Okay, so focus on the 
So do you think the six can it can go in the twelve so you put the two up here? And then is this the three number on this one? Like is there a number in there? It might be a number. Again, I know you are done if I see you quietly reading, writing, or working on something else. Or if you're sitting quietly, that will help you to do that. Okay. Okay. I'll finish up the day. Thank you. Ready to rock. Ready to roll. Okay. 
So I know some of you might be working on like the fourth one still. We're going to look at these together. I think I'm still going to use the black pen in case it doesn't brighten. We'll see. So put aside whatever it is you might have started working on while you were waiting. I know it got a little brighter. Dang it. Okay. Um, let's look at number one together. So number one, we have 20. Can 20 go into three fifth grade? No. No. Can it go into 30? Yes. Show me on your hand how many times does 20 go into 30? It goes in once. So we would put our one above that first zero for 30, and then we would subtract our 20. When we subtract 20 from 30, we get 10. Then we bring down our zero. Now we have 100. So then we ask ourselves, how many times does 20 go into 100? Show me on your hand, how many times does 20 go into 100? How many times? Five times. Nice. We put our five up top. 20 times five is 100. So then we subtract 100 from 100. We wind up with zero. So was there any remainder for number one? No, because we ended up with a nice clean zero, but we had 15 up top, so 15. Then for number two, we have 40. So when we ask, can 40 go into four? No. Can it go into 45? Yeah. How many times? How many times? Show me on your hand. Once. 40 goes into 45 once, so we put our one up top, and we subtract that 40. 45 minus 40 gets us 5, and then we bring down our 3. Now, 5th grade, how many times does 40 go into 53? How many times? Show me on your hand. How many times does 40 go into 53? I see lots of 1s, so 1. Yep, because if we did 40 times 2, that would be 80, and that would be over 53. So 40 times 1 is 40, so we subtract 40. 53 minus 40 is 13. Now, usually we would ask, how many times does 40 go into this number we got? But you guys, can 40 go into 13? No. No. So what do we call this 13? What is it? It's a remainder. So the way we represent that, we have 11. Then we would write R for remainder 13. So 11 remainder 13 is would be our answer for number two. Eosius. Eventually, yes. Not right now. Um, for this unit, we're just focusing on whole numbers, but eventually. So number two is 11 remainder 13. Are there questions on number two? What's your question on number one? I don't know. I mean, if you got the same work, you obviously did the steps correctly. Because, Zoe, do you have, you subtracted 20, you got 10, you brought down the zero for 100, right? What did you do? Oh, you just did it all at once. Yeah. That, yep. Okay. All right. Then we have number three. So number three, 60. Can 60 go into seven? No. Can it go into 72? Yes. How many times? Once. Put up our one. Subtract 60. 72 minus 60 is 12. Then we bring down our zero. How many times does 60 go into 120? Show me on your hands. How many times? It goes in two times. 60 times two is 120. So we subtract 120. Do we have a zero for number, or do we, <laughs> do we have a remainder for number three? No. no. And I should have been circling my answers as we went. I'm surprised no one said that. Actually, yes. You were going to make that. But three, there is no remainder. We just have a zero. There's nothing left over. Okay. Then we have number four. Let's see if I can like, let's do this. There. Is that a little brighter? How about now? Okay. So 
Now we have 80 going to 492. Now, can 80 go into 4? No. Can it go into 49? No. Can it go into 492? No. Okay. Now, for most people who asked for my help on this question, we got to that point, yes, it can go in, and then they look at me like, how am I supposed to multiply 80 to get into 492? I want to show you all a trick. So I want your eyes up on my smart board. My trick is, when you have a problem like this, you're like, oh man, Missy, I can't do 80 times whatever in my head, maybe, um, to figure out how many times it goes into 492. I like to think, okay, if we're trying to figure out how many times 80 goes into 492, it's kind of similar to us covering up the last digit of both of these numbers. And then thinking, okay, instead of 80 into 492, let's think, how many times is 8 going to 49? So, 8 into 49. That's a little bit easier for us to do, right? Yeah. So, how many times does 8 go into 49, fifth grade, without going over? Who can tell me? Six times. What is 8 times 6? Emmy? 48. So, if 8 times 6 gets us 48, then we could assume then that 80 times 6 would get us 480. Because remember, we're multiplying by 80, so you're just adding a zero onto the end. So 80 goes into 492 six times. 80 times six is 480. So we would subtract. And when we subtract, we would wind up with 12. Now, can 80 go into 12 fifth grade? No. How am I supposed to write the remainder? Who can tell me? How do I write that remainder? How do I write it? Senna. R12. Yep, so 6 and then R12. So for 6, remainder 12. So 80 goes in 6 full times with 12 left over. All right. You guys are going to anonymously tell me your levels of understanding. So go ahead, put your heads down or, or close your eyes. Heads down or close your eyes. As a reminder, you should not be using your face mask to cover your eyes. If you're in fifth grade, you know that's not how it's used. And as another reminder, so one, if you were to hold up a one, that would mean even with help, I still don't understand. Number two, I'm starting to get it, but I'm still confused. Number three, I can do this with help or an example in front of me. Number four, I can do this on my own. Number five, I'm very confident with this. I can teach someone how to do it. Go ahead, show me in your hands. One through five, how are you feeling about this? I want you to be completely honest with me. Okay. Hands down. Hands down. Open your eyes. Lift up your heads. Okay. Thank you for being honest with me about how you're feeling about this. We are going to go ahead and circle our numbers for our math homework. So, in your workbook, you are going to open up to page 267. 267. Yep, 267. Close. Two hundred sixty seven. All right. You are going to circle voices off on two sixty seven. You're going to circle number two. Number five. Number six. Then number 10. And then number 11. So I'll say it one more time. You should have circled on 267 and 268. Number two. Number five. Number six. Number 10 and number 11.
So fifth grade, we have about five-ish minutes of work time. So I'm going to give you the next five minutes. I'll turn on work music. You can get started on your math homework. Katish, go ahead quietly.